tribalism is a manifestation of our animal defaults. Yeah, I was thinking of that. Um, and that we need to be bigger and better and we need to be aware of it and we need to fight our base instincts, essentially. I'm here with Bob Summerwell, um, who's been on the podcast before. And uh, so welcome to welcome to the booth. Thank you very much. And so you, you were just giving a talk about... You know, something that um, we we all sort of notice and have to live with, uh, although uh, some of us don't like it, other other others feed on it. <laughs> but um, it, that is uh, tribalism in, in this in the in the crypto space. And I'll give you a little anecdote. So over sort of December and, and January, I not intentionally, but just because I was busy doing other things, I kind of like dropped Twitter for like a month uh, and a half. And then when I came back. Uh, when I opened Twitter again, or reinstalled it on my phone, and I started looking at, you know, just kind of scrolling through, I was like, uh, you know, I already, I already want to leave again, <laughs> um, <laughs> just because the level of dialogue often is, um, it's, it's very, yeah, it's very animalistic, uh, as you were just pointing out before we started recording. So, um, yeah, what, what's your take on what's going on in the in this ecosystem? And you know, I guess. Is this something I haven't really paid attention to? This, but is this something that we see in other uh, tech uh, industries? Like, this, is there so much tribalism in I don't know JavaScript development, uh, framework development? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, you, you you do get a little bit of that um, in in other technologies fields. You know, like a, a a a very renowned thing in software development is you know your tabs versus spaces. One of the things that I was mentioning today was. Um, it, if you look at the the article on Wikipedia about in-group, out-group dynamics, there's research that shows that people can form in-groups within minutes on things as trivial as preferences for different types of paintings. Um, so I think I think really what you have is we are social, irrational, emotional creatures, and uh, we maybe delude ourselves a little bit in blockchain that you know this is this is rational science and you know that we are building this technology and that uh, social factors don't play into this and you know sort of the i don't like politics kind of uh, mindset mm. where really well politics is people you know so you're you're basically saying you don't like people <laughs> Which is true for a lot of people. I, you know, I, I think there is a, 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 a large chunk of, of people within uh, blockchain or within any frontier technology who are, uh, you know, introverted, um, you know, just leave me to do my work uh, kind of people. I mean, something that I said in my talk is that uh, neurotypical people would, would not have been involved early on with a frontier technology like like blockchain, you know, um, it is what's, not what's normal. A neurotypical person. What is a neurotypical person? Well, uh, you know, so, so I mean, neuro atypical is, uh, you know, autism, depression, anxiety, um, uh, you know, egotism, narcissism, all of all of these sort of characteristics. I mean, that that, that essentially. Uh, you know, it's the crazy people. Well, you know, the crazy people are the people that invent the new stuff because they do things which are not the norm. You know, if you are a, in quotes, normal person, well, would you leave a, a good playing job at a large corporation that gives you good benefits to go off on some wacky adventure to try and build blockchain? You know, a thing which may or may not even work, uh, may be illegal. Um well, no. Entrepreneurial people um, have got that same kind of characteristic. You know, I, th I think this is a, a thing which is straight from our biology is you you need the, the, the main members of the tribe and you have a small number of people who have got different kind of characteristics. You know, they are leaders. They are explorers and scouts and inventors and, you know, they, they, they do not maintain the norm. <laughs> Um, you know, if you're following the norm, you are not going to be the person that invents a new thing. Um, 
so what you really have i think is is looking back to the beginnings you know to the the genesis kind of group of people um either within ethereum or within blockchain as a whole they're not typical people of course they're not typical people um and that works great at the start <laughs> but it doesn't scale mm. you know when you get to the point that we're at now where you're really looking at mainstream adoption you need a very different kind of characteristic of people um, all of the other job families which are not being a software engineer have got merit. Those are useful things. Um, but that that's a different kind of culture than you had at the start. Mm. You know, it's a, it's a very natural thing if you've been involved with something from the very start to say, well, look, it's not the same as the old days. You know, this is all getting watered down. All these people, they don't understand. They, 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 they don't, you know, they're not, you know they haven't got the same beliefs or the same priorities as me and they 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 they're spoiling it they're stealing it they're co-opting it um so i mean i think that that's that's the route to some of the tribalism is is just that 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 you have people in leadership sort of positions who are you know they're defensive of their territory and of their view of 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 what's right and wrong mm. Um, and that they do view alternate projects. You know, you have this this sort of language of, oh, it's an attack. Mm. You know, oh, you're an idiot. It will never work. You know, it's a scam. Um, so how do we get anything done? Because, you know, the, 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 the idea that, um, you know, something starts with maybe a, a group of people, and then those group of people have shared values, shared ideas, shared vision, um, and then as things start to grow, then you have more and more people joining that group. You know, it could be for crypto, it could be for anything. Um, then uh, those ideas might start to shift, might be um, you know perverted in, in in someone's eyes or whatever. But um, you know, for just about anything else, well, those people can break off and go and do something else, and you know, network effects and uh, will will uh, will uh, make it so that certain projects are. Uh, or certain ventures are more successful than others for something like crypto when there's just like so much value mm -hmm. uh one like so much value with you know actual value within the networks themselves if it's so easy to fork and there's just so much incentive to to you know capture value in another chain um how do you get anything done <laughs> and i think that is where it does differ from something you know like your javascript example is you have that same characteristic for any open source project uh, you know that that say say Linux. So you've got all of the different Linux distros, and you you know you've got your Ubuntu people or your Debian people or or what have you. You know where you you have got a, a similar characteristic, I guess. Of well, look, you, you're all sort of trying to do the same thing, but you know you have a preference or you have an opinion and and so on. But the the difference, I'd say, and and a key reason why there is such a heightened um, rhetoric within blockchain is because there's money at stake. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got bag holders. It's not like, well, okay, you go and fork my open source project and you have to maintain it yourself and that's fine. It's like, no, no, you're stealing money. You're, you're you know, you, 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 you have this, if, if you are a bag holder, you're obviously massively incentivized to, to talk your, to talk your shop and, and to betray and any, you know any other variants of that any other forks of that as you know as the most horrific you know attack and betrayal and you know throw these people into the fire you know how dare you do this mm. i mean i guess the, the distinction with with linux too is that all of these distributions use the same kernel or the same architecture i'm like i'm not a operating yeah. system expert by any means but they like they, they use a common uh kernel that means that they're still compatible anyway like you you know your 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 software that runs on debian will run on ubuntu or pretty you know pretty much will uh give yeah. or take a few uh i mean yeah generally i mean you know you, you you do end up having you know forks of the of the kernel itself you know and some of the stuff is getting resolved back and some isn't I mean, the worst case of that is Android. So the, the Linux kernel within Android is very, very different to, to desktop Linux. Right. Basically, again, its incentives is that you have a load of profit-driven um, you know, companies which are making Android devices, and they, they, don't, you know, they don't give a toss about the Linux philosophy. They're, they're just profit-chasing um, companies. So they are not collaborating in the same kind of way. 
but but yeah, I mean, there is a unique kind of profit motive around that public, um, you know, just rhetorical crap, to be honest. And I think a lot of that comes from as the number of people involved has grown, you do have more and more of the people are not actually have they haven't actually got any steering power whatsoever. Like I remember at the start on Ethereum, basically everyone was on the R Ethereum subreddit. You know, basically everyone working on clients, working on projects, they were all on there. You kind of knew all of the people and all of the projects, right? It was small enough that you could keep that in your head. You know, it was it was under your Dunbar number. You know, if you know your your hundred people, you probably know most of them, right? So you are are all kind of in that same kind of tribe. But then as that grew to, you know, hundreds and thousands of people and crypto Twitter and so on, by default, the absolute vast majority of those people, all they've got is their coins, right? They're not actually doing any development. Um, you know, that they, they, like, being able to impact the protocol or a client or anything is like a world away from what they can do. So they're basically sports fans, right? They're like, I'm an Ethereum fan. And all they can do is cheer for their heroes and boo for the villains. Mm. You know, it, it intrinsically descends into this zero-sum game of, well, my coin and my people, you know, they're geniuses and you guys, you know, you're all idiots and, um, you know, that that's the level that you descend to basically because that's all you can do. Mm. You can just you're just sitting and hodling and you're hoping your thing number goes up. I'm curious what kind of lessons we can learn from you know people that do um, kind of advocacy work out in sort of like for things like political issues. I'll give you an example. I, I think I heard a podcast once where um, there was this group of people that were. Uh, you know, basically lobbying for something like gay marriage, gay marriage in the U.S. or something like that, and and their their strategy for uh, getting sort of very conservative people on board was to try to find commonalities, right? Like outside of this thing that you, we don't agree with, let's find the sort of common bonds between us that you you can relate to me. Um, you can relate to me and sort of what I'm going through and then understand why like it's important for my group of people to like get this thing, which in their case was gay marriage. What it, what is it in crypto? Like what, what, it, what are the align the things that we can all align on? Yes. Um, if any, uh, that, uh, that might, uh, help, uh, you know, attenuate some of this tribalism. Yeah. I mean, really, I think, like, super I think, toxic I think that's a, that's a great kind of, line of thought which is really that to my mind the thing which binds so much of the space together is really about trust minimization um and the reason that that's important is because of human psychology you know that that we have got our our base biological instincts are zero sum my you know, my tribe, your tribe, my people, your people. And what that has meant throughout the history of humanity, or indeed, I think, for all, like, living species, is really, like, being selfish is the winning strategy. You've got limited resources, and it is my food. Give me my food, my food, my food. Go away, go away. Because if you didn't do that, you would die. <laughs> It's very, very stark zero-sum game. And, you know, that is your Darwinian nature, red in blood and claw, greed is good mentality, is seeing the whole of our life as this zero-sum game of, of raw competition. Um, but the thing is, we're past that, you know, the world has got abundant resources. You know, we are living like kings um, of the past. But the thing is, we're still wired. We're still wired for that for that zero sum thinking, right? Um, and I think many of the the problems that we have within our 
whatever our political structures and our organizations are that, that things are still wired for that right you're still looking to the leader um you know everyone is is is, is kind of like hardwired for looking for a leader right you know that the majority of people are just looking for the best leader to like lead the group right they're not looking to lead themselves the majority of people are followers and so they look for leaders um but what you have which to me is the absolute like genius of blockchain is that we've we found a way to tap those that that selfish motive in a positive some way right you know that we we have this this magical ability to say well look you you don't have to trust each other you can trust the math you know you can trust the game theory and what would previously be a zero sum game well look we can whatever we can put down deposits or staking or we can do you know we can play a game so that even prisoner's dilemma be can become a um we can know that we've we put down deposits and you'll be slashed or whatever if you if you choose and 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 that we can we can set up um collaborations where you can work with people even if you deeply distrust them or even hate them you can still set up um positive some games where collaboration is the winning move so i mean i think i think that's that's the key piece that 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 binds everyone within the whole ecosystem is saying well do you want to build trust minimization systems do you want to get to a world where people are not going to be living in fear i mean being coerced it, it, it's it's easy to say that but i think people like the the very definition of trust minimizing systems in this very sort of even limited space which is the, the entire crypto industry people have different definitions for what trust minimizing systems should be or are uh and, and I, I mean i get what you're saying but i don't think this is going to go away i think it's going to get worse <laughs> <laughs> I, I i don't have a whole lot of optimism for yeah. um for the the sort of tribalism and maximalism and and all this stuff to go away I well i mean it, I, think I think it'll just get worse. i think it's getting better and worse at the same time um, so say within this Ethereum ecosystem, for example, speaking now versus when I spoke two years ago, you have a massive raft of L2 technologies that have come to fruition, right? Um, so all of a sudden, the, the old thought that you had of saying, well, if you can scale Ethereum, right? You know, you can, if you can get to F2 and, you know, we can have something that's like Ethereum, but with more throughput, well, there you go. That's the answer to everything. And I think that narrative is unraveling a little bit because you've you've got all of these alternate L2s and then you're thinking, well, well, actually, maybe one size does not fit all. And you have got all of these different flavors and it's not like one chain to rule them all. I mean, I think that's 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 the false kind of thinking that has been the core of a lot of this um, tribalism from the very start is is thinking, well, because of network effects, you can only have one winner, right? So it, so then you end up with your Bitcoin maximalism or you end up with your, well, yeah, but Ethereum's going to flip in Bitcoin and Bitcoin will die. Um, or, no, you guys are, uh, you know, Ethereum's rubbish anyway. You need EOS because EOS can scale today or Tron, you know, and all of these different thoughts. There doesn't have to be a single answer, you know, and I think there's a lot more acceptance of that now. So take it take ethereum classic you know on its on its own um maybe two three years ago you know 2016 2017 it's like Ugh, ethereum classic dirty look at you you know protest coin it's just you know you're just bitcoiners who missed out and you know there's it's just it's an attack and you're just doing it for the money and all of this like you know that that's completely faded away right now mm. and and I also see a lot more appreciation of Bitcoin within the Ethereum group as well, right? Where not so long ago, it had been this straight zero-sum thinking, you know, Bitcoin is already obsolete and, you know, you can do, ev you know, Ethereum is a superset of Bitcoin and, you know, the world come a flippening and at the flippening point, then, then 
the network effect narrative dies and Bitcoin dies. Yeah. And like that's people are not generally thinking that now. So I, I, th- I think that's good. Maybe I'm not following the right people on Twitter. <laughs> no. Well, I think this is it. Honestly, if you a lot of it is um, is where you get your news from, and you see this in the in the the broader world, uh, you know that the news media is obviously motivated to do clickbaity horror stories. Oh, isn't everything terrible? Look at this bad thing that happened, right? Because that's what gets them views, because they're chasing views and eyeballs and and money. Have you seen um, like Hans Rosling? mind the gap kind of stats or whatever so he's 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 a guy and there's there's this thing called gap minder foundation and what they're doing is they're doing statistics on the world you know on poverty and illiteracy and average income and so on and and the story is if you look at the world on average everything is getting better like we're, (laughs) we're heading to a better and a better place but that's not the narrative you'd think you know, be afraid of terrorism. Everything's going to shit. You know that—that's what you would think is the truth if you if you listen to the mainstream media. Uh, but that's really just because that's what sells the ads. But but you know the truth of of saying, well, look, you've actually probably had it better than any generation in history, and it's getting better and better. And you know, and there's 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 more and more educated people, and 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 less and less poverty, and and so on. Like that doesn't sell papers. Yeah. What sells papers is be afraid, live in fear. Coronavirus. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know. So say terrorism. Coronavirus is good vi- business for journalism. Well, 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 it is. And I mean, and that's not to say it's not a real risk. However, you see stats saying you're more likely to die of a jellyfish sting than you are of terrorism. But, but, you know, that doesn't stop trillion-dollar spending on, on that. Or, or war on drugs. Obviously a massive failure. You know, be afraid, be very afraid. But, you know, we get our news through whatever filter we get it. And that is more and more controlled, that filter. So what, what advice would you give to people in the crypto space who are mindful of this? Because, you know, you... you at the outset, you, you have to be mindful of this to begin with. Yes. And there are people, there are people who are not mindful of this and who will never be, never be probably. Right. Uh, but, but, you know, to, to people who are, are minding their maximalism or their tribalism, um, what, what advice would you give uh, to sort of people and, uh, the, you know, the community in general? Well, try and withhold judgment. Because, you know, the fact is you probably haven't got all the information. Um, if somebody who is seemingly an intelligent kind of person is saying something that you get triggered by or you think no way you know don't don't like shout at them mm. straight away <laughs> cuz you probably don't know you know really like i i i just urge um withholding of judgment and attempt to try to understand their their perspective that that really um and and you don't have to agree with them. Yeah. Don't ever ha- think that you have to like resolve this into a single answer, a single universal truth, into a single tweet thread. <laughs> because you you know <laughs> you you cannot ever do this, right? I guess this is the essential problem of politics. Is say, take United States. Here you go. You have three hundred million people, or however many live in the U.S. You have something which is the size of a continent. Is it conceivable that any single policy is going to make that group of people all happy? It's an impossible task. Coming up with a single policy, a single set of rules, which is going to, you know, make all of those things happen. You know, is it ever feasible that whatever some southern racist is is ever going to, like, be kumbaya with some urbanite trans woman? (laughs) Like, it's not going to happen. So... uh, you know, you you can't resolve these things, but equally, like, you don't have to hate anyone. I I think you you can, uh, and it com- it comes back to finding commonalities between people. Right. Also, you know, let, let's l- let's be clear. I think a lot of this is um, ex- accentuated by a large a large part by 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 just the the means of communication that we have which is the internet Absolutely. which puts distance between people yes. i mean i i'll give you an example i went to the scaling bitcoin conference in tel aviv uh l- late last year and i hadn't been to a bitcoin conference since 2014 i think 
my my mind was set up for I don't want to say confrontation, but my mind was set up for um you know cuz epicenter is a, a little you know we do more we do less coverage of bitcoin and and more so of like other other networks or we try to sort of like spread it out a bit and um i, I was set up for people to maybe like attack me uh uh, uh not physically but like you know a, yep. a, attack yep. that blockchain agnostic position that we that we have and Everybody was super nice, you know, because we were talking. <laughs> yes. Uh, and and you know, when you're speaking with people face to face, it's it's much uh, it's much harder to, to to shout at them, or to like throw uh, sarcastic emojis at them. Or uh... I, yeah, and I mean, I think that is an absolute truth as well. Is um, you know, when you're sitting behind a keyboard, you can say anything, right? You 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 are not aware of social cues. Uh, you don't necessarily have your best behavior on you might be grumpy and you're just oh look at these idiots <laughs> um it's a lot harder to have that kind of adversarial um position yeah. when you are face to face um and uh, and i mean i think can you that's imagine why... can you imagine if the interactions that we have on twitter we, we, if like for one day we would just have those same interactions in person you'd get arrested <laughs> exactly you would get arrested and dragged to jail yeah you know so I, I mean i think this is why conferences and especially like community conferences like fcc are so important is that when you are actually face to face people mm -hmm. and you, you know and it's at a small enough scale where it is like feasible to like talk to most of the people mm. you know like at fcc here there's you know there's there's not a gigantic number of people and you're here for several days you know it's quite possible that you're going to have time to talk to you know most of most of the people that you would like to talk to to actually you know talk to speakers to talk to the developers yeah talk to the people that are building these things and and get beyond the well i'm you know i'm i'm an ethereum fan on twitter and i've been following your things but i don't I don't understand what you mean about this, that, and the other, and actually have that conversation. I mean, that's that's invaluable, um, and and really getting beyond the, you know, you're just shouting past each other, you're talking past each other, and you're you're really just having these rhetorical arguments. They're not discussions. You're not you're not getting to greater knowledge. You're just trying to make points. You're trying to win, uh, and I think that's a key thing is is like it isn't about winning because it's not zero sum like <clears throat> do not seek to win an argument seek to understand the other person's perspective and you don't have to agree with them but uh, you know that that really i think is is to my mind what i would like to see from people who are aware of these dynamics and and do want to have a better caliber of of discussion is you know, just stop trying to win and seek to understand. Um, please, but, let's do more of that. And I, I, I do see, and I do <laughs> see more of that happening. I, I really do. Great. But from a certain set. Yeah. But you also do have a lot more trolley, aggressive, horrible. Your things are shit coin. You're an idiot. Stuff going on, and I think really that that. Some of that is is just a characteristic of the forms of media that we have. Twitter, Reddit, um, Slacks, Discord. You've effectively got zero cost for creation of accounts. Mm -hmm. You know, so you will get sock puppets. You will get astroturfers. Um, you will just get people who are just being a dick because you can. Uh, you know, you just make a new account and turn up, and you just you know s seek to make a mess just because it's fun you know um and there will be more and more of that something that donald mcintyre has said a number of times um is given the amount of money at stake here you're going to have social attacks you're going to have trolling you're going to have all of this shit and some of it is just people being poorly behaved base instinct people but you also will have a degree which is organized opposition it is like paid trolling and attacks like i saw um you see all of the stuff with the uh u.s elections 2016 steering russia you know all of that stuff like that stuff's happening 
in blockchain. Yeah. Paid troll factories, you know, that people are paying people to attack, you know, and you, you see whatever your XRP army and all of these things. It's like some of it is just people who are just like literally being, well, um, they're cheering for their team and they, you know, they think they're doing good. But but you have got, you know, paid people that are just sowing, you know, sowing nonsense. Yeah. Less winning, more understanding. That's, uh, that's a, a good piece of advice, I think, that we can all um, try to, you know, uh, to, to, to live by. Um, thank you. Thank you.